In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a 3 by 3 system of equations using row echelon form. So we've got a system, three equations, three variables, x, y, and z, and we've got our augmented matrix, which just consists of the coefficients in the equation. And our goal here is to use row operations on the augmented matrix to take it through a process that converts it into a matrix that just has ones on the diagonal and zeros below. That way we can convert it back to a system of equations, which is easy to solve through back substitution. But don't worry about this part just yet. Let's focus on converting the augmented matrix into row echelon form, getting that diagonal of ones and getting the zeros below the ones. So our first step here is to divide the first row to obtain one in the first column. So we're looking at the first row right over here. And in the first column right now we have a two. But in row echelon form, we want that to be a 1. So we're going to need to do something to this row to convert that 2 into a 1. The simplest way to do that is just to divide the entire row by this number 2. So in our next step, we'll write row 1 divided by 2, and we'll divide each of these entries by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and then 2 divided by 2 is 1 again, then negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 and 2 divided by 2 is 1. Okay, now we'll write down the rest of our matrix. We had 3, 9, 0, negative 3, then negative 5, negative 3, 7, negative 12. Okay, so now our next step is to add or subtract multiples of the first row to eliminate the first column below. Um, so we're looking at this column here. And in the row echelon form, that column just consists of one, zero, zero. So we need to figure out a way to eliminate that three and eliminate that negative five. We wanna turn them both into zeros. And the way we can do this, to eliminate the three here, we can just subtract three times the first row. So the second row will just turn into the second row, R2, minus three times the first row, and then to eliminate that negative five, we'll just add five times the first row. So the third row will become third row plus five row one. Okay, so let's, let's write our matrix now. The first row just stays the same. We've just got one, one, negative two, and one. And now the second row, we're subtracting three times the first row. So three minus three times one, it's just three minus three, so zero and then nine minus three times one is just nine minus three, so six. Zero minus three times two is just zero um, minus negative six, so that's just also six. And then negative three minus three times one is just negative three minus three, so negative six. Okay, for the next row, we're adding five times the first row, so uh, negative 5 plus 5 times 1 is just negative 5 plus 5, so 0. And then negative 3 plus 5 times 1 is negative 3 plus 5, so 5 minus 3, that's 2. And then 7 plus 5 times negative 2 is 7 minus 10, so just negative 3. And then 12 plus 5 times 1 is 12 plus or negative 12 plus five times one is negative 12 plus five, so negative seven. Okay, now uh, we've got our, our column of zeros, our one, zero, zero, and that's what we wanted over here. And now we just have to do a similar process to, do, uh, to introduce this one in the second row, second column, and get a zero underneath, and then introduce a one in the third row, third column. So we'll do a similar process again. Now we're going to, now we're going to look at the second row this time. Use these, uh, divide the second row to obtain one in second column. So we're looking at this second row, and now this is the entry that we want to turn into a one. And we're going to do it the same way that we turned that into a one. We're just going to divide by that number. We're going to divide by six in the second row. So here we'll have row two divided by six, and we'll write down our matrix. Our first row stays the same. That's just one, one, negative two, and one. And now our second row is what changes here. 
0 divided by 6 stays at 0, 6 divided by 6 goes to 1, then 6 divided by 6 goes to 1 again, and negative 6 divided by 6 goes to negative 1. And then our third row, that also just stays the same because we didn't do anything to it. So 0, 2, negative 3, and negative 7. All right, cool. Now we just have to add or subtract multiples of the second row to eliminate the second column below. So we want to eliminate, uh, we want to have this two here turn into a zero. Because in our, in our row echelon form, we've just got uh, some number, then a one, then zero. We've got some number, then a one, but we have a two here. And we want to turn that into a zero. So how we can do that is we can subtract two times the second row from the third row. That'll get rid of the two there. So let's write row three becomes row three minus two times the second row, R2. And we'll write down our matrix. So top row stays the same. One, one, negative two, one. The second row stays the same. Zero, one, one, negative one. It's the third row that we're changing here. And we're subtracting two times the second row. So zero minus two times zero is just zero minus zero. So zero. 2 minus 2 times 1 is just 2 minus 2. So that also goes to 0. That's what we wanted. Good. And then negative 3 minus 2 times 1 is negative 3 minus 2. So negative 5. And then negative 7 minus 2 times negative 1 is negative 7 plus 2. Uh, so that's just negative 5. OK, now we're nearly there. Uh, all that's missing is we, we need our last entry here in the diagonal. We need that to be a one. So we're going to do that like we did in steps 1a and 2a where we divided. Here we just need to divide this row by negative five and that'll turn that negative five into a one. So we'll take this row and looking at that entry, we'll do row three divided by negative five down here and that'll give us our one here. So great, zero divided by negative five, zero, zero divided by negative five, zero, negative five divided by negative five is one, and then negative five divided by negative five, that's also just one. And we'll fill in the rest of our entries with what we had in the matrix above here. So we had one, then one, negative two, one, and zero, one, next one is one, and then negative one. And there's our row echelon for matrix. Great, okay, so this matrix is equivalent to the original augmented matrix, uh, just using row operations. So that means the system of equations corresponding to this, um, this matrix is going to be equivalent to the original system. But this system is going to be a lot easier to solve. So let's go ahead and write this system using the coefficients from this matrix. So one X and then one y and then minus two z and that is equal to one and then we don't have an x in this equation uh because coefficient is zero so then one y and then one z and then that equals negative one and then zero x zero y so no x or y here just a single z is equal to one okay Great, so now I've got our system of equations and we can solve the system via back substitution. And back substitution just goes like this. We, we see what z is, we already have the last variable here. We have z equals one. So let's use that knowledge to figure out what y is. This second equation just involves y and z and we know what z is so we can figure out what y is. So let's go ahead and sub that in. y equals, or rather, y plus one z, so y plus one times one is equal to negative one. So that's just y plus one equals negative one. So y equals negative one minus one, that just means y equals negative two. And now that we know z and y, we can find what x is using this first equation here. Uh, so we'll just sub in z and y. Um, so x, plus one y, so x plus one times negative two, plus uh, negative two times z, so negative two times one, um, and that is equal to one. 
Okay, so this means that x minus two minus two equals one, and that means x minus four equals one, so x equals five. Great, so there's our solution. We've got x, x equals five. Uh, we've got y, y just equals negative two, and we've got z, z just equals one. Perfect, there we go. In the future, we'll also learn more about how row echelon matrices relate to linear systems, including linear systems which have no solutions or have infinitely many solutions.